Hello viewers and welcome to another match of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest. My name is Mitch and I am the Hive Tyrant. Today I present a store championship game sent in to me by the player sitting to the right. His name is Christopher Dale Bates and this match took place at the Fantasy Flight Games Event Center in Roseville, Minnesota. What makes today's game particularly special is that it's going to be featuring two of the world's most pre eminent Packmaster Kith players. Chris Bates, to the right, ended up winning the 2015 World Eater Tournament, taking place one day prior to the 2015 Conquest LCG World Championship event, and his opponent to the left, Dustin Drake, not only managed to go undefeated for seven consecutive rounds of Swiss during day one of that same championship, but during day two, he placed within the top eight prior to being eliminated eliminated, putting him mere matches away from potentially being crowned the world champion. But Chris begins the game with our initiative token. His opening deploy action is going to be deploying a copy of Bloodied Reavers to planet number one, two cost, two attack, two hit points, one command icon, and it gets a plus two attack value bonus provided a warlord is present at that same planet. On Dustin's side of the table, we see an early game economy unit in the rogue trader positioned at planet number three. One cost, one command, plus one resource bonus, strikingly similar to that copy of Void Pirate we see placed upon planet number four by Chris. Another one cost, one command, instead, plus one card bonus unit. Note, planet number one is going to be Karnath, which allows you to activate the battle ability of any other planet sitting upon the tabletop. It could be routing a unit, it could be moving one of your units, it could be forcing both of our Dark Eldar players to put one of their potentially ambush-laden units directly from their hand into to play into their HQ, or it could be something as simple as stealing one resource from your opponent. Note, both of our players have put into play a copy of Incubus Warrior, planet number three for Chris, planet number four for Dustin. Those are each going to be two cost, two command icon units with three attack and one hit point apiece. And Chris has thrown out a copy of Archon's Palace, a two-cost unique support where whenever Dustin henceforth wins a command struggle, Chris can either shut off the card or resource bonus associated with that planet, including any and all modifiers. Looks like both of our players are getting ready to decide where exactly they want to send their warlords. So planet number one is going to be a red and a blue uh, icon associated with it. Planet number two is red, and if uh, planet number four is going to also be claimed, it looks like we could see a relatively quick victory condition. Uh, we could also see a victory through a planet uh, player winning uh, planet number one, three, and four. Note, at planet number three, we've got a copy of our alternate art promotion upon that copy of Rogue Trader and it looks like both of our players have decided to send their warlords to planet number one. So note, each of them is going to generate a 2-1 creature trait chimera token, and that means planet number one is going to be Dustin winning a card and a resource. His two command icons beat Chris's one. Planet number three, that is going to be a card and a couple potential resources for Dustin, although at some point we see Archon's palace being used, and planet number four is going to be a total of one resource to the left for Dustin. Note, We've got battle only going to occur at planet number one, and it's going to be Chris's initiative. He's got a Chimera token, and he's got his bloodied Reavers, which are potentially going to be attacking for four. Dustin, to the left, has four resource tokens, or uh, I guess that puts him in the danger range of Archon's Terror or Clavex War Leader, but let's see how exactly this combat gets resolved here. Uh, I suppose we could try to see Siren Zithlax killed off. We could go for a more surefire kill of that Chimera mirror token just to mitigate incoming damage as much as possible. Chris takes a swing with his Chimera token. He kills Dustin's Chimera token. That's going to be Siren Zithlex taking a swing at that copy of Bloodied Reavers. We see Superiority discarded as shields. That's going to be one total point of damage dealt out to that unit, and those four resources are going to be used to pay for a Clavex War Leader, so those bloodied, bloodied Reavers are going to be outright destroyed, and now it's going to be uh, Chris's opportunity to to either attack with his warlord or retreat with his warlord and cut his losses, but if he stays with Kith, uh, he's going to potentially be taking a total of five damage from the enemy warlord plus his own Clavex warlord, uh, plus the enemy Clavex warleader. 
Looks like Chris decides to retreat. The Clavex war leader deals out a finishing killing blow, bit of a coup de gras to that uh, Chimera token. That's going to be Karnath activated, and Planum is going to be shifting Siren Zithlex to planet number two. So Siren Zithlex is a three cost, two command icon unit, two attack, three hit points, and whenever you uh, deploy a unit to the same planet as an enemy copy of Siren Zithlex, your unit arrives exhausted. So an enemy Clavex war leader shows up it kills something but then it's exhausted or if you uh, deploy heavily to a planet where sits siren zithlex all your dudes show up exhausted they're unable to participate during the first combat round they don't contribute their command icons and that about sucks but looks like our our hq phase has come and gone it's going to be four resources two cards for each of our players we see a copy of murder of razor wings put into play at planet number one by dustin who now has initiative that is a one cost one one unit no command icon Cons, but when it enters play, you elicit a forced card discard from your opponent, and that is going to be a copy of Clavex War Leader discarded by uh, Chris. So, looks like Dustin hit absolute gold there. Note, our new planet number 5 is going to be Elowith, that two-card bonus planet. Chris throws out a copy of Rogue Trader to planet number 4, so he's potentially going to be able to win three resources off of that planet, and we immediately see that Murder of Razor Wings sacrificed thanks to the use of a somewhat seldom played signature event, Pact of the Homunculi, so that's going to be one card randomly discarded from Chris's hand. It ended up being a copy of Superiority, which allows you to shut off the command icons printed upon enemy units, or, you know, including any and all modifiers, and uh, Pact of the Homunculi also allows you to draw a couple of cards so I suppose if you're uh, pulling in a lot of resources, if you've got a lot of no command icon units in your deck, like Dustin generally runs pretty heavy uh, with those Murder of Razor Wings, then that's a pretty sterling opportunity to translate some of those uh, surplus resources into additional cards. And considering just how valuable cards are, uh, definitely makes for an interesting play here. But planet number one, currently under contest, is going to be Farron, the routing planet. Uh, definitely it's going to be in Dustin's best interest to win that planet because not only does it directly fuel one possible victory condition for him but he's going to be able to get rid of any nasty enemy unit further down the line like he could get rid of that incubus warrior if it's going to pose a problem or he could uh, route one of the enemy economy units but looks like both of our players have sent their warlords to planet number one uh, looks like kith there to the right is going to generate a chimera token we've yet to see a chimera token generated by dustin not sure why exactly Exactly, he's yet to do that. Uh, but planet number one is going to be a couple of resources to the left for uh, Dustin. Planet number two is going to be a uh, two resources and one card for Dustin. Again, note Archon's Palace is changing this somewhat. And uh, planet number three is going to be a resource for Dustin, uh, whereas planet number four is going to be three resources in total for Chris. Uh, planet number one, Chris again has initiative. Uh, one of his units takes a swing and kills that. That uh, I was Siren Zithlex kills that copy of Chimera token. Chris uses his warlord. Uh Kith, of course, uh, to take an attack that's going to be two points of damage dealt uh, to that copy of Siren Zithlex there, and I'm a bit perplexed as to why we didn't see a Chimera token uh, put into play unless I completely missed it, but at the end of a combat round, Chris decides to cut his losses. He retreats from that planet, and uh, that is going to be a Rogue Trader routed from Osis 4. So what that basically does is, uh, you know, like wherever your warlord goes, generally you win that command struggle by default, but Chris is probably going to send his warlord someplace relevant to his opponent's victory condition, and uh, Dustin's done a, done a good job of making sure he's got more command icons than his opponent does, so uh, if uh, Chris isn't going to be able to collect that additional resource, that's great, uh, but more than anything, if he's not going to be able to win Osis 4's two resources, then that is even better, so pretty damn decent play by Dustin, if I don't say so myself, but we've seen another HQ phase come and go. That's going to be four resources and two cards for each of our players. Dustin throws a, another copy of Incubus Warrior to planet number four. Note, our new planet number five is going to be Iridial, the healing planet. Planet number one, which is Planum, the movie unit planet, 
uh, Chris was fortunate enough to throw out a copy of Siren Zithlax, and he, if he's going to be able to win a battle at that planet, he'll be able to move the Siren to wherever it happens to be relevant. On Dustin's side of the table, he does a bit of a deploy stall there. He throws a copy of Promotion onto his own copy of Siren Zithlax, and kind of the shitty thing about having a Siren Zithlax in your HQ, especially when it's already wounded, is if you really need her sitting at a planet to fuel your winning the game you can't exactly benefit from her ability because you can't play another copy of the siren uh, while you've already got one in play, so it could be a great opportunity for your opponent to kind of circumvent that effect if uh, they can allow the siren to get swept up into your warlord's retinue and kind of delay their winning the game or something along those lines. But looks like uh, both of our players have decided where exactly they want to send their warlords. Planet number four is going to be Chris's destination. This time, Dustin indeed makes a Chimera token. Maybe I somehow missed that last turn. I don't know. But planet number one, that's going to be four command icons allowing Chris to win a card in a resource. Planet number two is going to be a resource for Dustin. Planet number three is going to be no contest. Looks like uh, Chris loses control of one of his cards there. It happens to the best of us. I'm about to turn 30, so I can only imagine it's a matter of time until I'm taking pills to make sure my deck functions correctly. But planet number four, Chris, is going to be able to win two cards over that copy of Incubus Warrior. And planet number one, Chris has got initiative. His copy of Incubus Warrior is going to take a swing, kill off that copy of Rogue Trader, and uh, that is pretty much going to be the planet unless we see a Clavax War Leader dropped onto the tabletop. But considering Siren Zithlex is going to be sitting at that planet, that's not exactly necessarily going to be the most beneficial thing uh, for Dustin to do because he could drop it into play, but then Siren will get to attack it. We'll see the, uh, you know, combat round. Uh, come to an end if the players decide to stay. That Incubus Warrior could have attacked, but regardless, uh, Planum is going to be activated. Siren's going to get swept up into the HQ, and it looks like that Incubus Warrior is going to be redeposited upon planet number three, but uh, Dustin ends up killing off that copy of Void Pirate that had been positioned at planet number two. We're going to see a battle at uh, our current planet number four, it's going to be a Chimera token handily killing that copy of Incubus Warrior, and that is going to be Chris having the opportunity here to take a look at the top three cards of his deck and add one of those to his hand. If you've not noticed it by now, there's definitely a lot of swag here on the tabletop. Uh, our player to the left, Dustin, not only has those uh, acrylic tokens that were given out to the player that did the best of each faction during the first day of the 2015 World Championship event. Of course, he's got the Dark Eldar faction tokens, like I said, very noteworthy Kith player, uh, but our players are also using those tarot-sized planet cards given out to those who uh, placed within the top eight of the tournament. And then last but not least, to the right, uh, Chris there is playing with one of the top 16 playmats from the uh, 2015 North American uh, Championships that were given out at uh, Gen Con 2015. But uh, we've seen another HQ phase, and this is potentially going to be the final round of the game here. Both of our players have come across four cards, have uh, four resources, two cards, Slith Mercenary played by Dustin to planet number three. It's going to be a one cost, two attack, two command, two hit point unit that, as an action, you can purchase control of for two resources. To the right, Chris plays his own copy of Pact of the Homunculi, and now that's going to be him discarding a copy of Rogue Trader in order to add a couple of cards to his hand and to force his opponent to randomly discard one card. Note that our dear lead developer Brad Andres has been sitting to the right of Chris throughout the entire duration of this match and uh you know i guess those forced random discards are just paying off big time because that's going to be another copy of a clavex war leader discarded there from dustin's hand but Planet number one is looking awfully daunting for Chris to try to best. I mean, look, he's got a copy of, uh, Dustin has got a copy of Clavex War Leader with an Agonizer of Bren attached to it. I've got to say that's the first time in any of these videos I've actually seen that played. It's going to give, uh, the attached unit plus X attack, where X is equal to the number of Chimera tokens you control. Currently it's one, but it's about to be two. Uh, we've got a copy of Archon's Palace in Dustin's HQ. He's had a copy of Twisted Laboratory for a while, which can uh, blank the printed text box of uh, units. And to the right, we see the Slith Mercenary being purchased. We see a uh, couple copies of Kith's Chimera Masters being played. So that is going to be one copy at Planet 1, one planet 
one copy at planet four. They're one, two, one command icon units for two. They each generate a Chimera token. And very importantly to the outcome of this game at, uh, well, in Chris's HQ, not at planet HQ, uh, we saw a copy of Chimera Den. So as an action, you can exhaust that and basically converge as many of your Chimera from disparate planets to the same planet. Uh, and you can do that, you know, at the exhaustion of that support. But let us see. That's going to be another unit to planet number one. It's going to be arriving exhausted, but that is going to be a copy of Bloodied Reavers potentially attacking for four. Uh, but that is just a mountain of opposition for Chris to try to chew through. It's going to be his opponent's victory condition... So Dustin has already got two red material type icons. Yavarn has got a red material type icon with it. Both of our players are going to send their units, uh, their warlord units, to planet number one. Note, Chris, uh, sorry, Dustin has even got initiative, and he's going to be able to launch an attack with that five attack value Clavex war leader and uh, potentially bloody Kith or kill Siren Zithlex, and then he's going to be free uh, to throw out copies of Clavex war leaders. So a lot of different nasty things he can do. Planet number one is handily going to be one resource one by Dustin. Planet number two is going to be two resources and a card to the right for Chris, although note, both of our players have a copy of Archon's Palace, which is going to be altering this significantly. Planet number four, uh, sorry, planet number three is going to be a couple of cards potentially there for Chris, and I can't quite tell if that's a void pirate because of the glares sitting at that planet or what that unit is, uh, but I presume that's going to be two cards shut off for Chris. And then the very last planet there planet number four that is going to be an additional card for chris but at planet number one we've got archon's terror and that is going to be minus one clavex war leader so that's going to be entirely removed from the combat equation and uh that is going to be two chimera tokens already sitting at planet number one and things are already looking quite a bit better for chris or sorry well they are looking quite a bit better for chris uh even though dustin's got a lot of units sitting at that planet that are not yet exhausted, but I can only imagine Dustin probably has Archon's Terrors and Clavex War Leaders of his own. Uh, Siren Zithlax ends up being killed... And now what exactly are we going to see next? We see a Chimera Exhaust to deliver a blow to what? There's a bit of glare that Chris just helped remedy. And uh, will we see shield cards? Will we not? It's been abundantly clear that we've got a copy of Warp Storm sitting in Dustin's hand. Uh, if he could kill off the majority of his opposition, that could be just fine. Uh, we see a copy of Raid Disc guarded as shields to block off the two damage associated with that Chimera token, and it looks like Dustin really just doesn't have much in his hand, and it's actually looking like uh, this could be pretty good for him, so he's only got that copy of Kith left, and he's just got a mountain of units to try to chew through at this point, even though they all showed up exhausted, just the number of bodies he has to deal with is uh, uh, absolutely immense, so I suppose at some point we could see that Twisted Laboratory uh, blank, the text box on Siren Zithlex, then we could see a Clavex War Leader, and that wouldn't make a monumental difference. But Siren Zithlex is wounded. Uh, if only we had that Clavex War Leader, because that would be an amazing play on Dustin's part. But what exactly are we going to see? Can Dustin do anything to save this game? Looks like he was definitely playing quite a bit more aggressively, and even though it was looking like everything was going great for Dustin the entire game, uh, looks like Chris may have ended up winning this just because he's basically blocking his opponent from being able to do anything too tremendously useful, and uh, the instant that Dustin loses this planet, things are looking to go all the way bad for him because his Clavex War Leader would be showing up uh, to some planet exhausted, it would likely be picked apart by the myriad Incubus Warriors sitting on the opponent's side of the tabletop. By the way, that unit at planet number three is a Slith Mercenary. I forgot about what that was. So there we go. We've got a new combat round. Both of our players opt to stay. The Incubus Warrior takes a swing. That's going to be Chris's Warlord with one hit point remaining. It's definitely eligible to be removed uh, via Warp Storm. And really, this could be anyone's game at this point. I could definitely see uh, Kith on Dustin's side uh, just damaging as many of these units as possible, getting all of their HP really low. And then Warp Storm finishes the job 
job, maybe an Archon's Terror removes whatever is left, so there's certainly a lot of different nasty things that could come into play here. That's going to be the Warp Storm. I was waiting for the Chimera Den to relocate uh, a Chimera to planet number one, but let's see. That's going to be two points of damage dealt out to each and every unit at that planet. Dustin loses his Incubus Warrior. Uh, Chris's Warlord is bloodied. Siren Zithlex is killed. The Bloodied Reavers is killed. And uh, whatever else was sitting at that planet, the Kith's Chimera Masters is also killed. So Kith herself uh, only takes two points of damage. I happen to forget which player's swing it was. That's going to be two copies of Chimera token being thrown to that planet. And I can only imagine that is going to be the GG right there for Chris. So... Packmaster Kith could have attacked and could have killed off one of those Chimera tokens. Dustin's Archon's Terror could have removed the only other Chimera token from that planet that would have left Chris with no standing units, and therefore it affords Dustin the opportunity to add that planet to his victory display. He hits three red material type icons, and that is going to be the good game right there. So, congratulations to Dustin Drake for narrowly managing to eke out a victory against Chris Bates. It looked like it was a hell of a match. It all came down to that last combat uh, because had Dustin failed to capture that planet, had his warlord been bloodied, or had he even been forced to retreat from that planet, I think Chris had developed a sufficiently powerful economy uh, that I just don't see Dustin realistically having been able to uh, scrabble out of the hole he dug himself into and end up winning that one. But very well played by Dustin. Again, fabulous play by Chris. Thank you in particular to Chris Bates for providing me with this footage, for allowing me the opportunity to spectate and commentate this game, and of course to record it and publish the entire affair upon my channel. Thank you to you, the viewer. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and do consider subscription to this channel if you're not already subscribed, and if you are, why not share this content? All all it means is that more people end up exposed to Conquest, they may like it, they may give the game a try, and the more people we have in our living card game community, all the bigger message we send to Fantasy Flight Games, telling them to continue to support this fantastic product. If at any point you'd like to get in touch with me, I would encourage you to do so through Facebook or on Twitter, and if you ever feel inclined to help support the Hive Tyrant, I would be absolutely honored, humbled, and deeply appreciative were you to help me cover some of my file hosting and operating expenses simply by making a dollar or two monthly donation to my Patreon. But as always, thank you so much for watching, and once again, be sure to check back in again soon for much more Conquest LCG content to come.